let's see the anatomy of the oropharynx oropharynx it is also called as mesopharynx this oropharynx lies between the soft palate above and the inlet of the larynx below this oropharynx lies in front of the c2 and c3 vertebrae in front of the c2 and c3 vertebrae there will be prevertebral muscles which are, which are covered with the prevertebral fascia which is separated from the wall of the pharynx by the retropharyngeal space in front this oropharynx it communicates with the oral cavity through the oropharyngeal isthmus and this oropharyngeal isthmus it is bounded above by the soft palate below by the posterior one third of the dorsal surface of the tongue and on each side by this palatoglossal arch in the lateral wall of the oropharynx there is a tonsillar fossa one on each side which is bounded anteriorly by this palatoglossal arch which is actually a mucus fold overlying the palatoglossus muscle posteriorly this fossa it is bounded by this palatopharyngeal arch which is actually the mucus fold overlying the palatopharyngeus muscle the apex of this fossa it is formed by the soft palate where both the arches are meet with each other while the base of this fossa it is formed by the dorsal surface of the posterior one third of the tongue when we see the floor of this fossa we have to remove this palatine tonsil and when we remove this palatine tonsil we will see the mucous membrane under it and when we cut the mucous membrane we will find the pharyngobasilar fascia and under the pharyngobasilar fascia we will find the superior constrictor muscle as well as the styloglossus muscle under it and within this fossa the palatine tonsil lie which is a lymphoid tissue present on each side of the oropharynx when we see the medial wall of this fossa we can see the mucus covered portion over the palatine tonsil will be there and within the medial surface of this palatine tonsil there are so many crypts are there and this clefts they are the tonsillar clefts and one of the tonsillar cleft it is large and this tonsillar cleft it is called as intratonsillar cleft which is present in around 40 percentage of the individuals and it is one of the cause for the lodgement of the food particle inside the palatine tonsil which may lead to the infection of it that is called as the tonsillitis now let's see the laryngopharynx which is also called as hypopharynx this laryngopharynx it is extended from the upper part of the laryngeal inlet to the lower border of the cricoid cartilage and this laryngopharynx it is bounded behind by this c4 c5 and c6 vertebrae which are covered with the para and prevertebral muscles ultimately covered by the prevertebral fascia which is separated from the wall of the pharynx by the retropharyngeal space anteriorly this laryngopharynx it is communicates with the larynx in the upper part and in the lower part it is closed by the posterior surface of the arytenoid cartilage as well as the posterior surface of the lamina of the cricoid cartilage which are covered with the mucous membrane laryngopharynx it is going to communicate with the oropharynx through this laryngeal inlet which is bounded anteriorly by the upper border of the epiglottis on the each side by the aryepiglottic fold and below and behind by the interarytenoid fold of the mucous membrane the structures present on the lateral wall of the laryngopharynx we have to see this figure here in this figure this is the coronal section of the laryngeal cavity as we already know 
the pharynx is behind the larynx so if we are seeing this figure from the front we will see the pharynx on the posterior side so here this both the lateral side to the pharynx we will find this fossa and this fossa these are the pyriform fossa this pyriform fossa they are bounded medially by this epiglottic fold as well as on the medial side it is bounded by this thyrohyoid membrane as well as the upper part of the thyroid lamina medial surface this fossa is the catch point of the foreign material outside the laryngeal inlet and the smugglers are used to deepen this fossa to carry the important diamonds or any important stones within this fossa for the smuggling very important now is passes just below the floor of this fossa and that is the internal laryngeal nerve so after completion of the basic knowledge of the three parts of the pharynx we now know that within this this much area so many lymphoid tissues are there and this lymphoid tissues they include the nasopharyngeal tonsil on the lateral wall of the nasopharynx there will be the tubal tonsils on each side just on the lateral wall of the oropharynx we find the palatine tonsil and this palatine tonsils they are also present on each side of the oropharynx and within this dorsal surface of the posterior one third of the tongue we find the lingual tonsil so when we take a section at this level like this we can see the ring of the lymphoid tissue at the level of the entry point of the air as well as the food and that lymphatic ring we will see in this image here this is the posterior side and this is the anterior side so here at this area the roof and the posterior wall in the midline there is one lymphoid tissue and that lymphoid tissue it is the nasopharyngeal tonsil so this tonsil is the nasopharyngeal tonsil the lateral wall of the posterior aspect there will be two smaller lymphoid tissues are there and these are the tubal tonsils one on each side so this two are the tubal tonsils now on the anteriorly there will be the lingual tonsil in the dorsal one third of the tongue and this tonsil it is the lingual tonsil and on the each side of the oropharynx and within this tonsillar fossa the palatine tonsil lies and these two are the palatine tonsils so one ring of the lymphoid tissue is formed at the level of the oropharyngeal isthmus where exactly the entry of the air and the food are going to pass and this ring of the lymphoid tissue it is called as a waldeyer's ring and which is present just under the mucous membrane so this is the first line defense of any foreign material which is going to enter through the air or the food